I am unashamed. What about you? So we're um, we're here today in the uh, command center of the Unashamed podcast, and it is pouring down rain again. Which you know what that means, Dad. The river is about to get start back up again. It. it I am currently driving through water. It's shallow. <laughs> To get Water. to my to get to my abode down there. So what we've done is supposed to do the years. You get used to it, but uh, it's you're a river rat, river rat. So yesterday, what were you saying about? You had a whole day. Was that yesterday when you and Dan were trying to get equipment to high ground? Somebody That's calls it. and a four wheeler gets left where they can, now you can't yep. get it out of there. My I mean, neighbor called yeah. called Dan and said, "I've got this. Uh, it's uh, one of these quiet four wheeler, battery operated four wheelers. You know, yeah. he left it on charge." Back a month ago, and now the waters hadn't been back down. Do you remember the movie? Now he can't even get there by vehicle or boat. You you, get, you have to go with by boat, and within a quarter mile of it, and Dan had to walk in, get it unhooked, turn the breaker off, drive the thing down there on the highest piece of ground we got that won't flood. It'll flood the world. It'll be Noah's flood if he goes any higher than that. We got him up on a knoll, but we left his rig parked up on the highest point over there, and we got Dan got back in the boat. And we took. So what did you say when Dan got out? He's he's wearing hip boots and he took off in a. Flat Dan had hip boots on, but he's in. He's a physical specimen of a man, just <laughs> torqued up, solid muscle. He drinks algae and uncooked egg whites for breakfast just to get going. He's eating stuff that, you know, would kill most people. But but he just comes by. I saw him just running with hip boots on, which is a pretty good You sport. never see that very often. But, but he was just, you know, he took off running. I said, you know. And he I, didn't really have to run, right? It wasn't like the thing. I'm was- 74, and I couldn't have run up the hill there. <laughs> but he took off running. I thought, I've got to carry a man with me like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They- For heavy lifting. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And Dad's always been good when we were young. He had a way, like my buddies would come down. I remember Elp would come down, Greg Epp and Elp. He would come down, and, you know, Elp was always torqued up, you know, as a young guy. And he'd grab a hold of something, and Dad said, good night, boys, look at that. You talk yeah. about strong. Oh, Don't bragging so, on him. Oh, and then so then he's just like an old man. He was shaking, trying oh, to hold that weight. trap. <laughs> Phil, that's been Phil's move for years. Oh, yeah. Brag on them when they're heavy lifting. That way they keep heavy lifting. But uh, old Dan yeah. took off, and he came back. He did say – he said, how did you get me that close through them woods like that? In other words, I got as far as you could go with a boat. I, he would have never known where to go. Right. And I got him within 300 yards of where the four-wheeler was. Right. But he would have stopped way back because he wouldn't have known you could go further in a boat. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, so somehow, I, was, I was doing the logistics part. Isn't it right. somehow place changes? I mean, you know this because we're people of the wilderness. You can go by a four wheeler or you know whatever. We got a bunch of contraptions you can go, and then when the water change, when the water comes up, now you're going in boat in boat. But everything to changes. rescue them. You can be in the same exact place, add twenty feet of water straight up, but nothing looks the same. That's Even right. the tops of the tree, you'll get lost in a place you've been your whole life. That's right. Because everything changes, so you you become good at this new. Look to everything. You almost have to anticipate. I mean, I watch yeah. y'all because y'all. You, you're right. I don't really have it, but to navigate in backwater is a whole other thing about navigating any other place. We're it's, over in a relatively small block. What we own, but what we own when it floods in the water, it comes in there and it rises twenty feet. It's a block of woods like a mile one way and a mile and a half, two miles the other way. Right. Well, you say it real quick, but if you're in the middle of nowhere with no roads, no no, no flagging, no nothing, I mean, <laughs> you're right. basically glancing up at where the sun is on to, 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 navigate to stay in a going. straight line. Yeah. You see what I'm you're saying? I remember it's seeing that amazing. movie. Uh, I think uh, the Texas guy, the Texas fam was in it. Uh, McConaughey? Uh, McCon- now he's doing these. Silly commercials about the, where he's out fishing, sitting what, in the back of the what, Lincoln. What, what is going on with that? I'm like, as a as an outdoors person, I find that offensive. You buy a car, and all of a sudden it makes you a great fisherman. Out, you go park it on a 
Uh, uh, this is the dumbest commercial <laughs> I've ever seen. But anyway. And the he, way he looks like, yeah. His little that, flag went off. The flag off. goes up and he's like, yeah, Lincoln, but baby. You, I'm not going to buy but, Lincoln but, just for that commercial. That's I'll tell all you that. about cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> that's right. That's oh, what's right. going on with Movies these Movies that made in in a while, you look at them and they, you end up on that, you're like, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, they caught him a few years ago. You know, he was they, he was smoking pot and he was banging on the bongos naked and the really? neighbors yeah. come. Yeah, this is a few years ago. I must have missed so that. So the neighbors would complain. So those cops showed up at his house, and he was stoned out of his mind, bongo naked. So to all the well, car, to wanna... all the car uh, <laughs> manufacturers out there, I am willing and ready if y'all will slip me a nominal amount of cash <laughs> to pull some stunt like that driving around in your rig. I'll do it. So okay. that doesn't Can mind. I get back to the movie? Look, I remember watching the movie. Calling all cars. What was the movie? I don't forgot what the movie was about, but the opening scene was him, and, and he was acting like he was – well, I guess he is from the South, but – he he's was, actually he, from Longview, Texas. Yeah, so he's out in the in the south, and there was a boat. The whole movie was about a boat up in the trees. And Missy, when we first started watching, she was like, that's the most unrealistic thing, the whole movie. I was like, no, no. The, you know, in a, flood, in a flood area, I just We've think, seen a lot of stuff. Well, like you that. see the strangest things in our area – you know, I'll be squirrel hunting, and I'll look up there, and I'm like, what is that? I mean, I'm looking up 20, 30 feet, and there'll be like a volleyball. And you're like, how did that volleyball? Because most people, how did a volleyball get up in the top of that? Not the, only that, that Jace, I pulled up into where the, the, the blind, the duck blind, right in the middle of the dog, that blind. Mm-hmm. Well, when I left it, we got a rise in water, but it's it's tied off. Well, I untied it. But I couldn't get it out of there because the water's too low. Mm-hmm. Well, I came back a week later, and I I, I looked out there. It's gone. <laughs> and I thought, okay. I said, Dan, the blind is gone. You, I said, you forgot to tie it off. <laughs> no, I knew it wasn't tied off. I, I, I meant to let it turn loose because there was nothing to tie on to. Well, where's it at now? Well, when I looked at Dan, I said, Dan, the blind is no longer there. However, I said, I knew – that it's encircled by thick woods. I said, so it didn't go beyond those woods. It couldn't have got through them. I said, but all we have to do is make start on this terrain, and we'll go along the wood line, and we will find it. That thing was down there where we all parked, down there where the boat is and all. Yeah, well, That's yeah. where we were. It almost – Worked its way and got out of there, got into the dog bayou itself, and went down the river. Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> but it was hung up in the trees like I thought it'd be. So we were going all around looking way out here, there, and yonder. And finally, I looked down there, and Dan, Dan pointed to it. I said, we'll retrieve that, Dan. So I pulled yeah. over there, got a hold of it, dragged it way back out, and tied it off out in the middle out there on some trees with a lot of slack. You got to remember, you'll be there like the other one. We had ropes on it. It was working fine. A beaver came by and cut one of the ropes. Well, now it was free wheeling with just one rope tied onto it. Well, th- that beaver saw that rope. He cut it. Well, I had to get another rope and tie it, retie it because a beaver cuts your ropes. Well, there goes your blind. So it's just one thing. People time. underestimate the power of current when this water's coming That's up. Right. You can yeah. be way away from the river. I mean, I don't know if I ever told this story before, but I don't know. It's probably 25, I guess. But me and W.E., our old your old <laughs> drinking buddy that we brought to the Lord, boy, he needed to come to the Lord. You ain't there yet. We, we all did. We got on this largemouth bass deal when the because when the river go, goes up, you think you, the fishing's not going to be good because it gets out of his banks. But what happens is there's so much current. Well, any kind of road or any kind of drop off, the bass just gather because yep. it becomes ambush points. So we get on White's Ferry Road where our church building is, right? past that where that bridge goes over uh darbon bay right where it goes down well we were driving down these gravel roads off that road and everywhere there was a bridge or a draw we were catching i mean we were catching literally 100 bass a day as the water came up so we did it like five days in a row but the river just keeps coming well that that morning that we went we had a plan where we were going to go we went down there and we were going to catch 55 bass 
because there was so a speed limit. So you have a paved time. road running for about a couple of miles, two or three miles, but the water is coming up, it's coming on, up. The, on the pavement, almost to the pavement, but it's rising fast. But we're parking on the highway, well, I mean right off of it, and yeah. putting our boat in down one of a normal road. The roads are closed. There's no traffic just on the main highway. So we get to fishing, and we, we just start hammering them. Well, the, we, there was traffic on that road that morning. And the water's still rising. And we would hear the water breach the main highway. And he he said, I think we might already get out of here. Because we'd hear that water cross. And I'm like, oh, I got another one. I'm <laughs> like, you know, I, it just like I didn't want to leave. But it kept getting, you know, water kept going. And finally, I was like, we were out on the road walking down the road because we were just catching a bass every cast it was like you know it's kind of like the caddyshack golf round yeah Yeah. you know and finally we looked down there at the truck and there's no land around it's just the truck and i and that's when it hit me i said we need to get out of here because now i've realized i'm in the flood i'm losing ground so then we got panicky well, by the time we got the boat to the truck and get it loaded up, now we're looking way off in the distance at the bridge. There's no land. No. All water. It's all water. And so, so we're, we're nervous. I was like, well, what do we do? And so I start looking for life jackets. And so when he got out on the road, well, he stopped because he couldn't see the road. And I'm like, all right. So I got in the back of the truck got with a life jacket. And I'm because I could barely see under the water the yellow line, you know, the middle line. Oh, yeah. And so I was, he had the window down. You know, how WE <laughs> was full blown panicked at this point. But look, we start going, and right before we got to the bridge where there was a little dip, well, now I can't see. I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to die because I got a life jacket. I mean, I might die eventually. But you know, W.E., he's done. If he, if he comes off this road, the whole truck's going off. Oh, it's but deep. As, but as we got closer to that bridge, I'll look. There's a 1,000 people on the bridge, cops, fire trucks, everything. The road's closed. And they're seeing y'all barely. Here we come. We're literally walking on the water <laughs> in, a, in a Toyota pickup. <laughs> And, and, and we, it, look, it we wasn't get up quite there. deep enough to sweep you off the road, and you're out in the ditch, and it's, it's. But the current was like this, and look, as we got up there, everybody started clapping, like we did some <laughs> you death defying act. I thought, well, you're clapping because we're idiots. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's exactly they were happy why they to were see clapping. you alive. That's right. They then it clapping. occurred to me what well, there was game wardens, and we got way too many fish. I thought. If they check us right now, not only have we almost died, now I'm fixed to have to pay a fine. Yep. But nobody checked us. Nobody said you know why they were In just the heat of the moment. You made it out alive, so they were just you know we lived. <laughs> so I mean, that's a true story. I almost died. Well, they always tell you when the when we have hurricane season all down here that water or floods is the biggest danger to life. More than wind. I mean, wind's bad. But water is a is a force to be reckoned with. There's no doubt about but it. So don't a, drown, go around. But, you know, when the water just comes up in your yard and gets deeper and deeper and deeper all the way to your house, gets up on your house, you're like, it, it's uh, – Well, y'all will be walking around here for you. It ain't going to be long. Well, I know one of the questions – This rain here is going to push it. Oh, one yeah. of the questions they sent in was about that fear of death, you know. Yep. And that – I really wasn't st- – Scared to die. I said they they asked the question because I think I made that comment when they right. when I made the emergency. You're telling the story about the the plane. I made the emergency landing. The fear was was there about two seconds, and then I thought, well, they didn't tell me anything. I didn't know, but I remember that day. The fear was more like I've really done something really stupid here. <laughs> Yep, and I, it's and not I, wise. Because it's like to me, I'm I'm torn in that deal of my, you know, there's one fear of people that have of dying, then there's another fear that you're gonna die, and everybody's like, well, that guy was stupid. Right. What do you think was gonna happen? Yeah. So it's like the fear of embarrassment while you die. You know, well, I you know, think everybody, if they would just zero in on what Peter said, Peter was one of the ones who. Uh, among all the other ones, they all deserted Jesus at his crucifixion, and they ran away from him because of fear. When they see him post-resurrection, all of a sudden it begins to dawn on them. He's, he just beat death for us. He beat it for us. 
he's in a glorified body, but he he can uh, what's the he, he can come through walls with the doors locked. He has this he's body. He's not held by the atomic and molecular laws. That's of right. Earth. So when they're seeing all this, he writes in Second Peter one, and this is a good way to alleviate your fear of death. He said, therefore, brothers, he ta- tells them. Uh, add uh, add goodness, knowledge, self control, perseverance, brotherly kindness. Above all, love. That's in five and following. And, uh, don't be unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Uh, verse ten. Be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. If you do these things, you'll never fall. You have it. Keep your faith in Jesus, his death, burial, resurrection. You'll receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom. You got eternal life here. It's all given to you. Then he says this, I'll always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. Now, this is a strange read, but a great one. I tell you what, it helped me with my fear of death, that's for sure. He said, I'm living in a tent. My body's the tent. It's temporary. That's what a tent is. You you, you put it up, it's temporary. You move. He said, I want to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of the body because I know that I will soon put it aside Here comes physical death, and your tent's going to be put into the ground. I'll soon put it aside as the Lord Jesus Christ had made clear to me that if you read the last part of of John or Luke or John, he says, I think it's John, where he said he told Peter the kind of death he would undergo to glorify God. John 21. John 21. So he said, the Lord Jesus Christ had made it clear to me, uh, my death is going to be a brutal one. So watch. And I'll make every effort to see after my departure, you'll be able to remember these things. Now, look, the Apostle Peter, after seeing Jesus die, being buried and raised from the dead, once he zeroed in, he was scared until he saw him alive. And then that's they thought he was a ghost. That's Luke, Luke 24. And he said, I'm not a ghost. He said, I, I, I've beaten death for you, boys. I'm, I'm, I'm the one that told you this had to happen, and y'all going to be my witnesses of it. And, of course, they did. But what he's telling them is, look, your physical death is no more than a departure. Right. You leave your body. <clears throat> it goes in the ground. Your soul and spirit, go, don't worry about the ones Jesus said to kill, you, kill your body. Don't worry about that. Mess with the tent. You worry about the ones can destroy both your soul and spirit in hell. That's the one you need to worry about. Therefore, if death is no more, according to what Peter said, than a departure, your soul and your spirit go to be with God, your body's here. When Jesus returns with your soul and spirit, he reunites you with a body that will be like Jesus' body. Right. We don't know what we should be, but we know when he appears, we shall be like him. I like Paul told the Philippians. That's pretty cool, there, Al. Oh, yeah. I'm like, not afraid of death because of that. Right? Yeah, I like Hebrews two fourteen because it's the whole reason Jesus became a man, which we talked about that Sunday in our class. It, you know, what separates Jesus from other religious people is he's God becoming a man instead of a man becoming a God. And it says, since the children have flesh and blood. He, too, shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, which is a reference of the evil one just killing you. He was a murderer from the beginning. Yep. You know, if you, you know, I talked about that with my friend. You, you get really excited about Jesus and you start causing a ruckus in the spiritual world, they'll just take you out, yep. the evil world. But then he makes this phrase, which I think goes with the question from our viewer, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. That is it. So somehow or another. That's what Peter was alluding to. It's not the end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of your immortality. Well, I wondered, though, why he used that phrase. Hang on. 
So before you go into that, because uh, I want to read exactly what she said. This is Celeste from Nevada, because you're zeroing in on what her question was. Because she she says she talked about your experience, and she said I too believe in the resurrection. What what Dad was talking about, but she said I do. Um, they said, would you please include talking about the fear that comes with death and how to overcome that? So even looking yeah. toward the resurrection, she's talking about just what you read in that verse, that even knowing that, how do you not be held in slavery because of that fear? She's saying, what can help me to think about and overcome that moment? That moment, and I thought about it, Jesus in the garden that the night in Gethsemane. I mean, when you see him, you hear what he was saying. There's no doubt he knew what he was about to face. And he did so with, with I would call it trepidation. I mean, he wasn't fearful. but What sometimes- Celeste is alluding to, Celeste, what you're alluding to is that period of time when you are separated from your body. It's the unknown. Read 2 Corinthians 5, Celeste, 1 through about the verse, 1 through uh, – Chapter 5, 1 through 10. Look, he says, meanwhile, look, we know that if the earthly tent, well, that's what the Apostle Paul is saying now. He's calling our body a tent like the Apostle Peter. We know that the, if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, as a car wreck and you're mangled and you've just died, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands, Meanwhile, and here's Celeste, here's what you got to remember there, honey. We groan. Celeste is saying, what do I do, Phil, about me groaning? I don't want to leave my body. I understand, and so did the Apostle Paul, Celeste. We groan because we're longing to be clothed, Celeste, with our heavenly dwelling. It won't be a tent. It'll be an immortal body. Read 1 Corinthians 15, the whole chapter. Because when we're clothed, you got your body back, we'll not be found naked. That's the way the Apostle Paul characterized it when your soul and spirit separate from your body. For while we're in this tent, and here's Celeste uh, is her fear, we groan and are burdened because we don't want to leave our tent. We don't like the idea of... A physical death. Because we were created to live. Because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. So that what is mortal, that's what you have now, Celeste, will be swallowed up by by life. Now, here's a kicker. It is God, Celeste, who has made us for this very purpose. Now, here's the kicker. Don't ever forget it, girl. It has, and he has given us the spirit when you're baptized, you repent and be baptized, and God will give you the Spirit. He's given you the Spirit, Celeste, as a deposit. Here's the key, guaranteeing what is to come, guaranteed. When I look at that, I say, you know what? I got a guarantee to leave this earth and my, my soul and spirit. My tent will be put aside, but when the Lord comes back, he's bringing me and all the rest of us with him and there'll be a resurrection, and the bodies will come back. You say, why is he coming back? To retrieve the bodies, and we rejoin with our body, but this one will be an eternal body, immortal body that will live forever, unlike this one, our temporary dwelling, which is nothing more than a tent. It's pretty cool. You say, by the way, how many, time, uh, how many people have you heard actually expound on that? Nobody but us. I've never heard that speech. Yeah. Have you? Have you, Jace? I mean, I've heard it before, but you don't get out much, you know. I mean, I've, I've heard other brothers in the faith, yeah, declare that. I'm just like saying in the world. I'm no. saying in America. <laughs> yeah. How no. many people have ever contemplated what I just read? Right. Well, Second Peter chapter yeah. one, the last. Well, I uh, think the Second Corinthians chapter five, and there you are. And the key in Hebrews two fourteen, because he Jay said it in Hebrews two fourteen, because that phrase. Held in slavery. Well, it's so, like a weapon. Yeah, exactly. That, 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 I mean, the evil one used. I want to. I want to bring one more out because if it is about spiritual warfare, if somehow or another, I mean, I don't know the details of how he does that, but somehow or another, the evil one takes you captive and holds you because of your fear of death. Now, what does that mean in a practical way? I don't know. Ideas. 
Well, <clears throat> I, I think you I mean? can. I think it's like anything else. If you dwell on it, and to your point that started this for her, when you were talking about being on that plane, you don't like to fly. I don't like to fly. I'm anxious every time, and so when when I'm anxious, I have to do what you said you do. I have to say, all right, why are you doing this? What you know, if this plane is because what it is, you're anxious because you're getting in a situation where someone else is in control of your life. Jay, so I think- mean, that pilot had a bad day. He did, you know what I'm saying? So that the anxiety is real, but I have to make a decision. So maybe the weapon is so you just say, well, maybe I just shouldn't go. No, well, here's what you have to remember, to Jace. Look, and some people don't. With the evil one and the microbial world. And all of that, and the car wrecks, and the and the what's your cholesterol because in your heart, everything you know, you got fat, and you, you got you got ten thousand <laughs> different ways, Jace, ten thousand different ways. Look to die. So part of that, yeah, what probably you just, more than that, probably more than that. But you say so if you get to a point to where you know you're guaranteed to live beyond the grave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When sickness comes along, what are you going to do? Are you afraid that this is a this is a terminal this disease? You know the ones we prayed for many of them that they said were going to die. We prayed for them, and lo and behold, I can count a large number that didn't die. Yep. They lived. They lived on. But but, but, what? but they but were they, afraid. But they died later. But they died yeah, later. You're always going to die. You're always going to die. Yeah, we know that. So even when you have a temporary reprieve, if you know that in the end you will depart from your body, go to be with the Lord. He's going to bring your soul and spirit back with him. And he's going to be, there's going to be a resurrection and dead men and women are coming from the graves, reunited with their soul. I think it's hard. Her, her question is it's hard to see the, the forest of that though, when you're in the trees. I mean, what I want to read is revelation 12 and, I think it's a really good picture. You know, I've, I've always said I think Revelation is written in picture form in contrast to the rest of the yeah. 65 books. But the picture presented here is you have Revelation twelve nine. It says the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. And we all, I've already read in Hebrews 2 the whole reason Jesus came, or one of the reasons, was that he became a human was to destroy the work of the devil and remove that tool that he uses, which is the fear of death. He was hurled to the earth, the angels with him. And then, you know, John's writing this. I heard a voice in heaven say, because, because we have an enemy out there, but the voice from heaven says now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of is Christ. So we now we have the two sides. You got the evil one and you have all authority with Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down, which is what Satan means. His name, he's the accuser. Well, here's the key. They overcame him. So the way to overcome this tactic the of the evil one was by the blood of the lamb, which we have forgiveness because he accuses us and we say oh yeah you can't accuse me he I'm, paid for I'm that on the cross That's right. but then the next part is interesting and by the word of their testimony and you say well, what does that mean well, I think he clarifies it here by saying this they did not love their lives so much now you're talking about who is they the people who are putting their faith and trust in Jesus they didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. They were being persecuted Well, that's the tactic he uses, right. the fear of death. Which was my <laughs> point. Sickness, disease, they mur- murdering you, feeding you to lions, tigers. That's right. And But then he goes on, rejoice, you heavens, all who dwell on them. But woe to you, because the devil has gone down. He is filled with uh, fury because he knows his time is short. But my point is, I think there's something to be said about the fear of death the way the evil one uses it is he wants you to be quiet about Jesus. And there's a fear that people have. We don't really think in our culture as much that if you speak about Jesus, our fear mainly here is embarrassment or you'll be, you know, maybe persecuted or name called, but this same tactic. But in a lot of cultures, if you start talking about Jesus, they'll kill you. I mean like that. 
That's well, correct. I know where that's coming from because what we just read. There's a tactic the evil one uses. He uses that fear of death for you to shut up. Therefore, this, therefore, this. Jace is a is a is a deep thinker. See, the difference between Jace and me is I'm a shallow thinker. <laughs> I never get any deeper than a six foot hole. <laughs> that's as deep as I go. And here's why. This is another Celeste. Write this down. First Peter chapter one, verse twenty one. Though through him, Jesus. You believe in God, who raised him from the dead. We're, we're back on it again. That's what's going to happen to you, Celeste, and glorified him. Now he's got a glorified body. And so your faith and hope are in God. Check this out, Celeste. Now that you purified yourselves by obeying the truth, that's the gospel of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart, now watch this, Celeste, for you have been born again. Now watch, not of perishable seed, that's your human birth. We all come from perishable seed, but look what happens. You, you, you're born of perishable seed, but because you have been born again, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God, you say, so when I received God's spirit, I was implanted with imperishable seed that guarantees you will live forever. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I think when you combine what you know and what you have in Jesus, or maybe who you know is a better way to say it, and then you don't have that fear of death, you become a dangerous person to the evil world. Because you just think about it. You think about our military or whatever. What makes, you know, America great when you look back to the history? I mean, there's a lot of men and women who risked their life, I mean, and went to their death because of what they believed in. And it was even just the freedom of being in our country. I mean, it's, it's a powerful force. And I think the same thing applies to our spiritual world. You know, I think we got to get in the mode of the best thing you can do to overcome fear is to be active and public about your faith. Yep. Because I think one is you got it in your mind. He's using that. It's never as bad as it seems. You know, like like they told us, you know, you and your duck call business, even when we kind of took over the business, they're like, if you go out there and holler about your faith in Jesus – you're going to lose your business over because there's a lot of people not going to buy your product because they don't like the religion. A lot of world. people said you can't mix, you know, duck calls with with uh, religion. Or, and that's yeah. what all the commercials. Yeah. You know, we were talking about the first commercial about you know the the McConaughey sitting in the Lincoln. Well, very seldom do you see a commercial about anything spiritual or God because it's just not like, like well, never. <laughs> Look, I saw uh, Missy showed me yesterday. You'll, I, I try to stay out of politics, but I realize I'm going down a dangerous road here with, with my dad here. But uh, look, she showed me a clip. This happened two days ago. Oh, uh, who's the guy running for? Uh, it's not, not, not Bernie. Uh, Sleepy Biden. Joe. Yeah, Sleepy Joe. So Biden is at a gathering. This is two days ago, and he's quoting. The Declaration of Independence. He tried. He to tried quote. to quote. Oh, y'all have already seen that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, look. He so got we to that. We're all. Jay. That we're all. We watch. We watch the news. Yeah. <laughs> look, but he says we're all created. When he starts off saying, uh, you know, uh, all men are created equal. When, when he got to God, that's when it stopped. <laughs> he got to God. He said, and you know, they're created by the thing. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That you know, thing. you know, you know, the, you know the thing. Well, I think he meant, you know, the Declaration of Independence. But he didn't want to quote that one phrase but i thought that made him look so bad well jay's you know, he's they early, never, they he's never early stage that. dementia that's what's making him by look the bad. way look but the, then he won well i know which is so sad about here's, the here's a little part. simple text for you girl now look <laughs> whoever believes in me even if he dies yet shall he live and whoever lives and believes in me will never die well, if you read that text, you say, never die. You're born again of imperishable seed. You put this tent aside. You, your soul and your spirit lives. Right. You come back and reunited with your body. You say, 
It's not the end. Physical death is not. It is the beginning. You're like, you have an eternity waiting on you. He brought life, life, and immortality to light through the gospel. So if you look at it, Celeste, honey, you have no worries whatsoever. That's what we talk about. You will and you never are, die. Yeah, me and you are coming at it from two different angles. Correct. Feels like saying it's an understanding problem. If you don't, if you understand what you have, you won't be fearful. That's exactly what Phil is saying. <laughs> I, I'm agree. I agree. But I'm also I love saying when Dad goes first person. But I'm also <laughs> saying it's an experiential issue because what is the goal of the evil one? He does not want you to be public about Jesus, and in in the subconscious of your mind, he uses that fear to control you. I mean, what's that the new Christian? Or it's not new, but the guy because said fear is a to, liar. He wants to make it your your fear is coming from your fear of the unknown. That's right. Fear what I'm saying unknown. is what when you read out. these texts. So you're saying it's known. It's known. You, can know. you just haven't zeroed in on it, and, you're and right. your faith is not so here's strong what enough. But I'm saying you've got to go out there what do you and say? live You're a preacher, a licensed says. preacher. I'm not a licensed preacher like you boys are. <laughs> That's right. I, I got, I'm not a licensed I got a degree. preacher. I don't even know what that means. I, I got a degree. So you're both right, and, and you're right, Jess. You're looking at it from two perspectives that are both correct. And I think that's going to help not only Celeste but our audience. To your point, the girl, the little girl, I was just looking her up, um, that was in Columbine, you know, the big shoot-up about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. She's a Christian. She's 17 years old. They come in and start shooting up the place. They're just demon-possessed killers. You know, They started really this whole shooting stuff we have now in in America, which is – it's of the evil one. Yep. And now you talk about a moment of fear of death. Yeah. And this little girl, and he says, is there anybody here that's a Christian? And they're shooting people. Most people kept their mouth shut. Well, everybody but her. It, but her. And she said, I am. And they killed her. But when I look back at that, it's 20 years later. I mean, that's an inspiration for me. That's a modern day Peter or anybody. She, she was like... I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm gonna stand yeah, up. Yeah, that's for them. what that revelation. I mean, that's what it meant. Her, she left but her tent. She left her tent. She's alive. She's alive. But Good that to one go. little and phrase she still inspires people. That one yep. phrase in Revelation 12 that says they didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. You know, I think about my life. I like to hunt. I like to fish. I mean, I like to do all these things. You know, I like people. We have get-togethers and. I mean, you know, you, you could list a thousand things, but I'm never going to love all that to the point to where I'm going to deny Jesus in any of it. I mean, to me, that's the, there comes a time, you know, if I got to be poor to be a disciple of Jesus, guess what? We're going to have to be poor. I mean, it, no matter what the. He destroyed him, you quoted, who had the power of death. He destroyed him. And the and who held people by their fear of and death. bondage. So what I was getting to though in that about the money or whatever, you go to the doctor tomorrow, and he's like, "You got cancer. You got four weeks to live." Well, there's going to be something that's going to happen there, the emergence of fear, because he introduced something that you weren't, you know, prepared for and didn't yep. didn't know. It's a truth it, that was there, but now all of a sudden it's a truth revealed it's because a it's reality. Like, this is fixing to happen. So right. you got a number of things you can do, which you're going to start praying, obviously. You may even shed some tears, but you're going to have a moment of sober, you know, of, of clarity. He didn't tell you anything that was not out of the realm of possibility. He's basically saying you're going to die. Well, you already knew that, but now he's just giving you. He's you know, giving you the means by which it's going to happen. So right? what the world does is, well, it's just a number, so don't listen. And when they say there's four weeks to live, you know, and I agree. That's just silly. How does he, how does he know He's that? guessing. You know, but and we're like, if God is on our side, I'm sure enough not going to put a number on. But when you step back and think about it, you know, we just had a buddy who died of cancer. I mean, they told him that, and you know what? That's what happened. So somewhere in there, you've got to – I think it's okay to be fearful right at first because of the reaction. It's going to be a new normal. It's going to be – but then what, what I've seen people doing who have faith in Jesus is then they just step it up a notch. You know, I shared my story about Kathy, you know, a yep. few weeks back. She just 
added that into her arsenal of sharing Jesus. Oh, yeah, by the way, I have cancer, and I'm not really worried about it. And it just became, like, even more impressive that she's like, if you think that's going to stop me, oh, you're, you're, you're wrong. And all I can do is just look at other people. I don't know how I would respond, but I know one thing. She was very inspirational. She was. And look, so is Tim. So you mentioned Tim. I'm speaking at his funeral. I'm flying to West Virginia because his wife asked me to go speak at his funeral. I'm like, I'm in. I mean, that's how much I love the guy. Tremendous guy. So that's this Friday. So here's here's what he sent me this two months before he got the news. He sent this to me because we texted back and forth. And it was just something he was reading. And it says, an interview with God. Man, what surprises you most about humankind? So like this is, you know, this is what the man says. And it's like he's talking to God. God, that they get bored with childhood. They rush to grow up. And then they long to be children again, that they lose their health to make money and then lose their money to restore their health, that by thinking anxiously about the future, they forget the present such that they live in rather neither the present nor the future. They live as if they will never die and die as though they had never lived. So, you know, I was just looking back through my text chain and that was two months before he got the news that yeah. this is probably what's going to kill you. But I thought it was very poignant because we really should live like we know death is you coming. You mean he wrote that before it happened to him? Before it happened to him. He found it, yeah, and read it and sent it to me. What was ironic was I look at the text chain. He sent me that the morning after Jan died because I was working yep. on her funeral, you yep. know, your sister yep. who, who lived – until she had dementia and then lost her mind, she lived every day for the Almighty. She sure did. I mean, she and pointed you to Christ and then therefore yep. us. So, I mean, think about that. That really is, you're right. I mean, our motivation has to be this life is about preparation for the whole deal. Because if you don't, look at what the world offers. It's, they got it backwards. You think about what what is what do you, how are you deemed successful? You... Go get an education. You get a job. You work what thirty years. Pay off all of your student debt. Yeah, pay all that, and then you then you retire. Well, when you retire, you can't do anything now. I mean, you're <laughs> you're you're all. It's like, I mean, you're sitting around looking at the walls, talking about your injuries. You know what I mean? I'm supposed well, to be retired years ago. I'm seventy, going seventy four now. I said, when do you finally shut it down? And I got to thinking about. It. I said. No, we're still hollering about Jesus. You know? no, I, we're look, doing you're, podcasts. You're a you got example. a show. Yeah, but you're, you're just working. Just, Phil, you're you're a, working more now than you did. More than I ever did. <laughs> you're a good example because you realize that, you know, what you're doing was, share, you know, preaching twice a week and doing, you know, podcasts for a guy your age. I mean, it is exhausting just because you're, yeah. you know, preparing. I mean, I preached three times last Sunday and I was like, I felt like I was run over by a truck, yeah. you know, and, uh, so it is a lot to go on, but you do realize, well, what are we here for? I mean, our retirement is not – that that model that the world uses, I'm like, that's not a good model. No. it's. I mean, I don't and know what you put, they need to do to look, correct it. I'm really not worried about it. The information that was transferred during this little podcast, it will go to several hundred thousand, maybe a million or so, but that that's where the information is going. You say, well, where did it come from? You say some guys who are, some of them in their 70s, some of them's in their 50s, but some guys are looking forward to their physical death and they've discovered a source of immortality. The story says life and immortality, and they tend to think that's exactly what's going to happen. Yep. So we're telling people about it because it's, we, we love them enough to say, hey, check this out. Yep, we got got immortality here. It's if you want it. That's right. You say, well, how much it gonna cost me? Oh, it's free. Well, you just think about it. You yeah. would think most people would say, you know, if I'll tell you, a, if it, a shot I'll at it. I'll tell you this: I'm about to, fear. To I think down. people gravitate toward people who have every reason to fear that don't. Yeah. But I'll tell you something about the Bible that's very interesting. You know, the number one phrase in the Bible is "Do not be afraid." That's right. Said more than any other. Jesus said it more than anything else he but, said. But listen to this. But like number four 
is fear God. And so I got to thinking about that. <laughs> I didn't read this out of a book or anything, but what I concluded was you don't fear because you know God. You know, as Christians, you know God. You, he's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's all-loving. So you don't, you don't, you're not afraid in circumstances. You fear God because he knows me. <laughs> <laughs> and I screw up. <laughs> so you better fear him because he knows you. Yeah. So if it's hard to get in the habit of of learning that little what do we call that? Uh, truism. Truism. And I didn't read that in a book, but you test it out because I it's a struggle because people are like, well, how am I supposed to fear God? You know. And then not be afraid. That it seems like counterintuitive. Right? Yeah, counterintuitive. But I wanted to throw that in because I think when it comes to fear, it's okay to fear sometimes. You know, especially when it comes Plus to the God. Fear of God is yeah. the beginning of wisdom. Right. I mean, trust me. When Jesus is coming back, when that literally happens, there'll probably be three seconds of fear. Like, what in the world? I mean, yeah. there, there's going to be a moment where you're like. What is this? Some and I really of, think that. Yeah, is that a storm coming? You said, it's bigger than that. You know, the earth is shaking. You hear it's a fire. It's bigger than that. Whew. You know, you know, it's getting hot in here. And you're right. Jesus, remember one time he's telling the disciples, hey, we're, you're in the boat. What, what is wrong with y'all? I mean, you know who I am. They were so fear, remember, about that thing. And he just calmed the storm and they were like, oh, and they, they worshiped him. But then when he was in that garden and he was sweating those drops of blood, as a human being, knowing that he what he was about to face, I mean, he had to, yeah. as the Bible says, gird up his loins and say, "This is going to be rough." Well, my point you know? is, is is in our in response to the viewer is the more you get to know God, the less fear you're going to have. That no doubt. the answer is that when you're in with the Creator and all His qualities, omnipotence, omniscience, you know, all knowing, all powerful, all loving. Well, you just that fear subsides yep so thank you uh celeste from nevada and others who have sent stuff in our whole podcast today was was dealing with that very important topic so we appreciate your stuff coming in um and then we'll work uh, those questions in from time to time uh as we can so uh, keep watching unashamed and uh keep corresponding and keep telling other people about it So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast. 